Caroline, line four, hello. Hello, Alan. Hello. Hello, yeah, have you got a brain or is your head just full of shit? <laughs> the fear is that if you, if you act like an idiot and you don't make people laugh, <laughs> then you're just an idiot. OK, Mike from Polgrave, are you there, sir? Oh, you ignorant c <laughs> Serving up excruciating slices of life, Partridge took sitcom by storm. Confirming Steve Coogan as the king of cringe comedy and immortalising his most enduring character. Oh, I remember nipping down the road to Lily White's in London and buying a golfing sweater and putting that on and then combing my hair in a kind of a dodgy way and uh, that was sort of the, the genesis of it, I suppose. The merciless news satire, The Day to Day, provided Alan with his very first TV appearance in 1994. This is Sports Desk. I'm Alan Partridge. Coogan's all-too-accurate lampoonery switched to light entertainment as Partridge briefly hit the big time as a cheesy chat show host. Uh -huh! There was the challenge for the writers and for Steve to take Partridge a little bit further and see what's next. I mean, could have done another series of chat shows, but in a way it was, it was more exciting to move on, I think. The result, I'm Alan Partridge, was a fly-on-the-wall portrait of the erstwhile presenter. Alan Partridge did this brilliant thing, which is a brilliant use of tactlessness. It's like Alan Partridge is going to be that bloke who says exactly the most offensive thing, kind of, that's on his mind. What? <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is, they're, like, they had to sell proper jobs, you know, for a gun till, then... The one dear, you know, a lot of them's from broken homes. Oh, sorry, Mark, that was just a noise. <laughs> On set, he's just utterly focused. He just is Partridge. He doesn't come out of Partridge. When we're, when we're uh, doing a recording, he is Partridge for the whole evening. That's it. And that really works, because you have a kind of... You have a kind of a reverence and a, and a bit of a, a wariness of him because he's Partridge. He's never Steve. You know the uh, breakfast buffet? Eat as much as you like, but from an eight-inch plate. See that? Twelve inches. <laughs> Keep it in my room. It's, it's perfect. I mean, every middle-aged man who has ego deficiencies is like Alan Partridge. Well, I suppose what you're trying to say is you don't want another Chris Evans on your hands. No, that is what we want. I'm your man. <laughs> well, you had a kind of subtext throughout the whole thing, which was he wants to be back on TV. And that one thing he returns to is that nightmare sequence. I, I don't know who's responsible for the idea of the lap dancing. <laughs> I thought, well, OK, this is, you know, it's brave, it's a departure. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only moment where you see inside Alan's head and his deepest, darkest fantasies. Would you like me to lap dance for you? I want a second series. I like your thong. Yeah, it's vulcanised rubber, which means uh, it won't perish. Having kind of been in that situation of trying to sell a programme to people, it's really tough. And you kind of just think that's what it is. You're whoring yourself to the big corporations. <laughs> when we were in the writing room, I'd get quite defensive and say, don't, don't do that to him, you know, because I actually quite cared about him. It was like, you know, you have to sort of treat them as a real person and ultimately sort of give them some semblance of dignity at some point. I mean, you can do lots of things to them, but, but don't destroy them. Um, right, well, I'm afraid, Susan, I've got some very bad news. Oh? I'm leaving you, you cow! <laughs> so, so it's a bit of a joke there, it's backfired. There is a certain kind of pleasure of, thank God I'm not Alan Partridge, which is something most people can say. Uh, I can't.